You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live, Fashion 411. Featuring the week's roundup of fashion news. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, Fashion 411. We need to do a little move when the music comes on. Turn to the left. What? We are the Goon Squad and we're coming to town. Doesn't that just get you going? Get your yeah, heart pumping? You get you ready to talk and listen about fashion? All right, you guys, it is a Friday. This is the last Friday in March. Oh and if gosh. you, I know, right? This Goodness month is just April. I know. <laughs> that means great fashion. I know. I know. <laughs> so if you are tuning in, this is Fashion 411 on Black Hollywood Live. And uh, we just want to remind you guys to make sure you download our show for free on iTunes. And, uh, Another reason why you're going to want to download us for free is because we are the number one fashion podcast Woo-hoo. on no, iTunes. No. And that's all because of you. Thank and you, thank uh, you. you guys can also check us out on YouTube. And we just invite you to rate us and comment and let us know what you want to hear because we do this show for you. So uh, let's go around the room and let's introduce everyone on the on the panel across from me. Hey guys, I am your host, Erica Garcia Rojas, and I am your go-to girl for all things business and fashion. I am the co-owner of Rally Babe Apparel. What's up, everybody? I'm your co-host, Courtney Stewart. I'm your resident girl for all things shoes, shopping, and the consumer perspective every week. And I'm Deanna Vaughn. I used to be a slave to the fashion world in New York City on the corporate level, and then... I decided I needed to be here and talk fashion with you and kind of bring you guys, you know, the runway to the real way, you know, things on a budget. So uh, it's time to dig in. Oh, and I also want to remind you guys, um, you can actually follow along because sometimes we put some pictures up and have a little fun and you can check those pictures out directly on blackhollywoodlive.com or you can check us out on Instagram at bhlfashion411. And we have a little surprise for you a little later. We've got a guest, um, designer Andre Soriano. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he was a former contestant on Style to Rock, that uh, fun fashion show uh, executive produced by Rihanna on Bravo. But he's going to be calling in a little later in the show, and we're going to talk a little fashion with Andre. But for now, what's going on with the lookbook? Now, um, you know, in honor of uh, Andre being with us, or kind of being with us calling in today, I decided to let you guys know. So, all right, so say you have a red carpet event or a party or some kind of, you know, big major event happening and you just don't have the budget to really invest in in buying a dress and accessories and all the things that go with it. Well, there are tons of options for you ladies to still look runway ready, but on a budget. So the first website is Rent the Runway, and I'm sure many of you have heard of of Rent the Runway. It's gotten very, very popular over the years, and they first started out as just renting like um, cocktail dresses and red carpet looks, but now it has morphed into you can rent like, you know, regular everyday contemporary dresses, jackets, accessories. It's kind of like your one-stop shop and they have everything, even like uh, like Spanx and undergarments, everything. <laughs> Those aren't for rental looks. Yeah, I wouldn't want to rent that. Like, That's <laughs> Purchase. That you yeah. have to buy. I don't need personal. to rewind on that. But it's it's literally like a one-stop destination for, you know, just any event that you might have. So if you've got, you know, a big party or a cocktail event, uh, you know, anything like that, Rent the Runway is going to, you know, get it done. You just basically pick out what you want. You rent it. And, of course, there's other little details in the mix, you know, like they've got insurance on things because a lot of people wonder, well, how does that work? How do I rent something and I send it back? And what if I spill coffee mm-hmm. on it or whatever? Mm-hmm. They're insured and, you know, they have a way of, you know, figuring out all that stuff. But that's one really great affordable source if you don't want to really commit to something. And next up, it's called somethingborrowed.com. Now, this is a site. Um, they're more well known for like bridal gowns and um, bridesmaids dresses, but they also, you can also rent, um, you know, like after five and cocktail looks from them. 
But if, you know, it's that time of year, it's the spring, and if you're looking to get married or if you're going to a wedding, this is another great option where you can actually just rent the dress. Uh, and then third on the list, it's One Night Affair. Now, what's interesting about One Night Affair, I actually think this was the original dress rental company. This was started by a former model back in 1986, I want to say. Ooh. And she created the site because she found herself like trading dresses with other her model friends or whatever. And then suddenly she just got an idea and she's like, well, this could be, you know, a business. Mm. So she created One Night Affair and it was based off of two different stores actually here in LA. And once those stores merged, she went online and this was born. And it's just they dress, you know, everybody from celebrities on the red carpet, because don't be fooled, they don't always buy their dresses. True. Because mm -hmm, they need to save a little, save some coins too. They never buy their dresses. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Rarely. Yeah. So, but not all, like you, the average everyday woman can feel like a celebrity because you can also go on, you can rent a gown, you can rent uh, accessories, jewelry, shoes, bags. It's all in one place on one night affair. And then another site, it's called rentfrockrepeat.com. And let's see, is there a little picture of that? Rent Frock Repeat. Again, it's it's uh, the same type of idea. You can rent your gowns, you can rent your accessories, your jewelry. But what's great about Rent Frock Repeat if, is if you live in Canada, up there, a boat, <laughs> um, you can also utilize their services. Because I know for some, like Rent, rent the Runway and some other ones, it, you know, I don't know if they actually send overseas to different places, but if you're a, a Canadian, a Mountie, then you've got a source. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, Tradesy.com. Now, what's cool about Tradesy, um, you can actually turn your closet into cash. So not only can you like sell and rent clothing, but you know, say if you're just cleaning out the closet and you know, there's a lot of stuff that you want to get rid of, you can just put it on Tradesy and you know, Somebody nice. will buy it and goes right into your PayPal account. Mm -hmm. So and that and it. yeah, and they've got designer brands, they've got contemporary brands. You can buy Chanel or you can get something from J. Crew or Michael Kors. So it just it's a a really broad uh, designer base of, of what you can get from Tradesy. And it's clothing, it's shoes, it's men's, it's women's, it's kids. It's dresses, it's wedding, so lots of stuff. And Eric, I think you know someone. Who I do has know a somebody who has a business. For those of you guys that are here local in Los Angeles, I actually know somebody that has a very successful business called thestylistla.com. Mm -hmm. And what's great about that and the fact that it's local is that she actually has a showroom also. So you can order it online, but you can also go to her showroom and try on whatever dresses that you want also. Awesome. So, and she goes to all the sorority houses, does little trunk shows there. So uh, she's very much local here in LA, but if any of you guys are local, definitely check her out. The stylistla.com. The stylist. The stylist. Okay. okay, it's on to some beauty information. What you got, Courtney? Beauty beat this week. So we're always talking about makeup and things, and we're we've talked a little bit about skincare in the past and some budget ways to do it. Well, sometimes you want to splurge a little bit, so I decided to bring in a medium splurge project product that I actually find to be absolutely fantastic with skincare. Um, the company is Aura Gold. Um, they have a store, I believe, in Century City Mall in LA. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure of other locations, but obviously you can avail it's available online. Um, one of my favorite products that they have is called the 24 Karat Gold Deep Peeling Treatment. And mm. basically, if you're like me, with exfoliating, it can be a little bit challenging because my skin is excessively sensitive to exfoliation like to the point where like the lightest the softest brush on the Clarisonic if I use it like two days in a row is too rough for me oh wow so um I found this product actually I didn't find it my boyfriend found it for me yeah. <laughs> I appreciate him so much for that but it's an exfoliating product Ooh. and I just want to show if I can pull this I have, like, on. Gold I've actually like used this so it's a little bit empty at this point but it's 24 karat gold pieces in it oh my God. and it's actually a gel and it's so light and soft and basically you put just a tad on your fingertips and you dab it on your face and you rub it in to like a moisturized face, a slightly moist face like in the shower and it'll start to flake up like little gold pieces and oh. you just lightly rub it, cheeks, forehead, you know, how you exfoliate all over and I promise you, your face 
will feel like a baby's behind, like <laughs> the softest like of baby butter. behind, like like butter. It's fantastic. It's a price point of one hundred and twenty eight dollars. So it's not well, crazy I guess you expensive. Get a lot of uses, but you get from, a lot of use out of it. Like yeah. I literally, because I can't obviously I can't do this every day. I maybe do this once a week, oh, and okay. I've yeah. had this for almost a year. So oh, okay. it's that's, totally that's to me, it's it. totally worth it for yeah. that one time splurge. And they have lots of other products that you can check out, but mm -hmm. this one just is my favorite. It's a great little quick exfoliation that is very soft and very gentle and fantastic and so. what's great is that like the solid gold facial that's yes. it's becoming really popular, popular at a lot of spas and it's expensive it's very expensive so you yeah. get your like version of that mm -hmm. with this little guy so Do it at home. check that out nice. girls and guys <laughs> All right, what's up for Style Scoop? Okay, guys, I've got your Style Scoop for this week. And first up, I'm sure many of you guys are fully aware of the fact that Kim Kardashian and Kanye have made it onto the Vogue cover, but I got a little bit of insider information on that. Uh, Miss Kim K herself was on uh, Seth Meyers' show this week, and she gave a little bit of tidbits behind the scene info. Uh, first of all, her sisters had no idea that the shoot was happening. I don't know if I believe that. I don't believe it either. But that's what she said. That. So that's what she said. I don't believe. I don't. I know. No way, right? Uh -uh. It's her mother's her manager. I guarantee the that. Cover of Vogue. Yeah. Come on. And why would no? And she said that she her, she didn't know that she herself was actually going to make the cover. That they thought it was just going to be Kanye, and that wasn't going to be also Kim. It was just going to be a spread in the magazine. Okay. So supposedly she didn't know until it came out that she was going to make the cover, mm. which I also don't believe. I don't Kate, believe that either. But <laughs> Kate Bosworth was buzzed off. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, she had a super secret meeting with Sarah Burton in London to get fitted for the feathery Alex Alexander McQueen dress she was wearing in the photo spread. And... Northwest actually oh. peed on Kanye during one of the shots. She said, quote, he was trying to tell me, he was trying to tell me and I couldn't really hear him, she said. Quote, I have to get up and clean her off, clean him off, it's a good memory. So that's what she okay. said. Okay. No. Yeah. I just, it's funny because it's been all over Facebook know, and a lot of my like fashion friends are like, I'm never buying Vogue again. I can't <laughs> believe, and, yeah, because Kate Upton, I just said Kate Possible. Kate Upton, But yeah, yeah, it was Kate Upton yes. that was supposed to be on the cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that like she should have held off, well not held off because it's not like it was up to her, but like, do you think she kind of got robbed since she wasn't on the cover all by herself? Rob, I wouldn't say Rob, Rob because no. I think she's lucky just lucky to be on to the be cover on it at, at all. all. True. But to be honest, I, I'm so over them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's true. I am just it's so over her and yeah. so over him and the two of them together that Agreed. seeing them on the cover of Vogue and makes like, me, Ugh. yes, that's my reaction. My reaction is not like, oh my God, I can't wait to see what Kim has right. to say and what she's wearing. It's like, Ugh. it almost makes me like not want to. Like, it makes you guys. I don't buy Vogue anyways. It's not a magazine that I buy or read, but... It makes me especially not want to. Well, I do buy Vogue, and I am very bitter, and I know that maybe I shouldn't be, and there's all kind of arguments for why she gets to be on the cover and why she should be on the cover and why it shouldn't have been a big deal anyway, and I'm sure those arguments on some level are true and wonderful and great, but it still makes me vomit in my mouth just a little <laughs> bit that it's Vogue and Kim Kardashian. And it's really funny, all of the posts that were all online about her, you know, girls can dream big now. You go from king to playboy, and you can oh, be on Vogue. Funny. Like, oh, funny. Well, the thing is, too is that Anna Wintour has always said that she would never put a reality yeah. star yes. on the cover. So that's why a lot of, you know, the uproar is coming from because, well, here she is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Maybe that's why she didn't get it by herself. I don't know. But yeah, I, I feel you. I'm We're well, over it. We're not the only ones that had that kind of reaction. <laughs> Naomi Campbell had an interesting reaction. Ooh, I love and, her. I know, she's hilarious. <laughs> she's hilarious. She had a reaction to the cover shoot during an interview on Australia's morning show. She said, quote, I do not want to comment on that. The interviewer had asked her about it. After which she broke out into a really shady laugh. A real shrill laughter. She said, quote, I'm a fashion model. I've been working for 28 years and when you get a Vogue cover, it's a huge build in your career. It's a stepping stone to achieve that. And then when her interviewer asked her again about the cover, she said, quote, I'm being politically correct. That's Anna Winter's choice to put them on the cover of her magazine. Who's to question it? Oh, so, there you go. But it was her laugh that was like, if you listen to it, you're like, oh, okay, she's, she's not a fan. So... 
Oh. All right. Well, we've got a uh, fashion award for another fashion icon, Rihanna. She just received an award, and this one was from the CDFA for her style. Quote, we are proud to present Rihanna with a CFDA Fashion Icon Award for her impact on the industry as fashion's most exciting ambassador in recent memory, says the CEO, Stephen Kolb, in a statement. Good for Rihanna. Yeah, yeah good for She's her. She's doing her thing mm -hmm. in that arena. I'm yeah. not mad at She's that at all. She's someone who I would think would be on Vogue. She's Vogue yeah. worthy. Yeah, you know, sure. somebody who stands. She has a fashion and stands for fashion. And she's very much iconic in the world of mm -hmm. fashion. And I feel like she's the Madonna of this generation. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what for I mean. Sure. She changes up her style, and everybody's following her. So well deserved. Yeah, I think it's deserved. All right, so a, another collaboration, or more like a, not a collaboration, but Steve Madden just announced that it will be acquiring Brian Atwood's label, taking on both their high-end division and their B by oh. Brian Atwood line as well. Atwood will still hold a majority, a minority stake in his company and will re maintain creative control over both. Quote, we are an incredible balance to each other. Both entrepreneurs, both passionate about shoes and building brands, Atwood told Women's World Daily. Quote, Steve brings in the expertise in successfully operating global fashion brands with a wide bench of industry-leading resources and the talent and vision to optimize B. Brian Atwood. While I bring the luxury market and designer experience, this is a perfect next step for me in achieving my vision for the overall Brian Atwood brand in partnership with Steve. I have spent more than 13 years nurturing my brand with great clarity, and now it's time to capitalize on that work. That was a nice paycheck he just got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a nice check. Yes. Isn't it crazy how Steve Madden, like you guys know the history of him, like mm -hmm. he's been to jail, yes. Yes. you know, for fraud, and you know, he was even part of that Wolf of Wall Street yes. movie. Yeah. So like that he, was interesting. Yes, he was referenced to that, but like he sold like the number one shoe, and I just I find that like even though he went to prison and all that stuff, he's still life back. After. Still a life after on the rise. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. There's Steve Madden's shoes still in every single department store that you go yes, to, they are. and they're in every single mall. And now they're gonna get even more breath with the Brian Atwood. They're gonna totally. enter that luxury market, yes. whereas before Steve Madden was not in the luxury not market. Not at all. No. So no. it'll be interesting. I just hope it doesn't water down the that Brian was Atwood. My question. Brand at yeah. all because yeah. they make beautiful shoes and I wonder now what does that mean? Are they going to change your production? Mm -hmm. Are they going to? I would imagine they would yes. have to. I would think they'd it's have gonna to. It's going to come down a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. just yeah. price point, just to make it accessible. Because, well, they have you the know? two brands. So Brian it's, Atwood has is Brian Atwood and the B by Brian Atwood. So okay. the B by Brian Atwood is kind of that less expensive, more accessible brand. Mm -hmm. It's still a little bit pricey, still more expensive than Steve Madden shoes. Mm -hmm. Right. But I hope that it doesn't change the quality of it always does I right know it, it always, always does. Does. It does they sell out all right so another collaboration here is with Stella McCartney she is teaming up with Disney and Angelina Jolie for a capsule collection of children's oh, clothes oh, inspired oh, by yes. Maleficent in theaters May 30th the eight piece collection has t-shirts sneakers sandals and of course princess dresses for boys and girls aged 4 to 14. She says, quote, I've always been a huge fan of Disney growing up, as was my mother, and I grew up watching all the films like most kids did, McCartney told Women's World Daily. When the opportunity presented itself and I was invited by Angelina Jolie to visit the film set, I jumped at the chance. The collection, which is released at the end of April, is a little bit pricey. <laughs> Expect to spend about $75 to $150, $185 for any of these pieces. 10% uh, of the Proceeds will go to SOS Children's Villages, which gives homes to needy kids. It's not as expensive as I thought it would be, so that's nice. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's when you think still... Stella McCartney, you're like, oh boy. Yeah, yeah how much go. can you really sell like a, a five-year-old's T-shirt? You'd be surprised. Yeah. Very <laughs> surprised. Designers. Yeah. So yeah, that's a nice. But it's a cute. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, Zara does a great job at keeping its trendy prices affordable. However, those of you looking for even more cheap prices, the mega brand has an outlet store called Lefties that's been around mm -hmm. since 1990. What? I just got chills. Oh my what? god. Yeah, but don't what? get don't get too excited, guys. <gasps> Lefties is only located in Spain. Damn! Yeah. What's that about, Zara? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we don't know anything about yeah. you. When I saw this, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> A place where I can go and get, like, Things from past seasons. That's what it yes. is. So basically, Lefties is only located in Spain and sells out of season leftover Zara designs. Zara, uh. Zara's, uh, Zara's parent company, Inditex, is looking to rebrand Lefties and putting it on par with H&M and with prices that are 30% lower than Zara. That's great news 
but not for us here in the States because it's still only going to be available in Spain. So I have to go and get Reasons a ticket to, to Spain. To España. I have to, to España. I have to say Zara in Spain, though, is like like the gap yeah, here. It's it on every I know. other it corner. Is. Like it's they're everywhere. everywhere. I remember wow. going to Spain years ago, and they had, and this was before Forever 21 and H&M was mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and they had Mango, yes. yep. they had Zara, and we were like, oh my Top God, shop. this is uh -huh. amazing. This is amazing shopping. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, years later, it's it's you all here up. in the States. Yeah. But here's the thing though, I notice when a lot of these foreign stores overseas come to the States, Think, like the prices change, like when Topshop oh, came course. here. I loved going to Topshop in England, England. because yeah. you really got some serious deals, deals and like fashionable stuff. But now that it's here, it's so overpriced. It well, you and think about it, if it's, I don't know down. much about the manufacturing of Topshop, mm -hmm. but it's a company from the UK. I mean, our dollar is not strong. Mm -hmm. I get it, no, but still, when they came, it just, we it, were it on changed. par with each other. It and, changed. Yeah. It changed so much when it came here. And like now, like I used to love, you know, going to London. Mid mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to Topshop. I didn't care about anything <laughs> like, else. Yeah. I'm going to Oxford Circus. But like here, it's just, it's not the same like deals. And like, I yeah. mean, a pair of jeans is like $150. Well, they sell I'm it like, at really? Nordstrom's. Hmm? Topshop, they sell they'll it sell at Nordstrom's. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I've bought a few things from the Topshop here, or specifically from Nordstrom's, and I've actually returned them. I just felt that for the price that I was paying, it wasn't worth mm -hmm. it. It was not worth it. I could have gotten something probably just as good, if not better, for an H H and M. So. It's because America mm -hmm. is the land of consumer mm -hmm. yeah. consumer we just buy whatever. Like, oh, that's know. the new thing, and yes. it's cool, and it came from there, and uh, and they they know we will buy it regardless. So exactly. they're like, put it over there. Damn lefties. Okay. <sighs> All right. So. Cool. Um, Mr. Andre Soriano, I think we're going to get him on the phone, but until we do, uh, just just a little bit about our guest that's calling in. So um, he is a Bravo TV reality star and fashion designer, and he is one of the industry's hottest up-and-coming designers that everybody's kind of talking about. Um, he was featured on the Style to Rock show. Um, I think we've got a picture. We've got some pictures of... of um, Andre coming up. Oh, okay. Oh, well, wow. These are a couple of his, yeah. All right. So these are a few of his runway looks uh, from this past um, fashion week here in Los Angeles. And those of you listening, make sure that you go onto our Instagram account, BHL Fashion 401. We have Check all the photos out. here. Or go onto our, our YouTube channel and like us there too. Let's see. Do, do we have Andre on the phone yet? It says it's ringing. Oh, okay. All right. Do -do. Okay, so no. he's primarily uh, <laughs> a formal wear designer. Yeah, um, he like his, his forte is you know evening gowns, and he's really avant garde. I mean, just if you can just judging from what we see right here, and he's just you know got the attitude and got the the style. And he's originally from the Philippines. I don't want to read all about him because I want for him to tell us about him. <laughs> um, but no, we're excited to to have him call in and chat with us. Um, do you know how far along he went in the competition show? Oh, gosh, I forget. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm getting it confused with another competition show because I, I didn't watched see that so show. many of them. I saw like one or two episodes of that one, and then but they've like split up all the shows. Like, well, they've what's got his name? Tim's got his Tim own one. Tim, yeah. I'm like, wait, this is a different There's show. There's the and thrust, the model. The all stars show. were going, and then the face, and it's it's a lot with the models and the fashion. The I do right wonder now. though how these competition shows, like once it's all over, like how it really affects their popularity and their brand yeah. and like, you know what I mean? Well, like, I can fashion, imagine, you know? I mean, we've had a, some of the people mm -hmm. from Fashion Star, yeah. who was the jewelry designer, she was from, Remember the jewelry designer? Oh, yeah, she her? did the oh, accessories. Probably yeah. Probably accessories. accessories. Yeah. And it sounds like you're talking to mm -hmm. all these contestants. Like, it's it's always good. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. exposure and right. you're introduced to new people. It's free so advertising. It's free advertising. So I, I can't imagine that anything bad would come out of being on one of these shows. Well, I wouldn't say bad, but sometimes I think maybe, like, I wonder if their expectations get built up. Um Okay, uh, if their expectations get built up, like, oh, I'm on this reality yeah. show, yeah. and then yeah. once it's over, it's like nothing's happening. Yeah. It's crickets, you yeah. know. Because I have a friend who is actually on an HGTV Design Star. Do you guys ever watch yes. that? Yes. And he's the only one from his cast who has parlayed the that show 
into doing like just more TV time. Everybody yeah. else, they went back home to their hometowns, and nothing's happening. So I think it kind of depends on who the person is and yeah. what yeah. business plan they actually have in place when they go into it and knowing mm -hmm. how to capitalize on that moment in time. And everybody doesn't have that same sort of attitude and ability. They kind of like go on and expect that it'll all come from them, yes. but you actually have to parlay all of that into constant networking and constantly going after new opportunities. Yeah, and like you said, it depends on what you want because some people end up on these shows like on Fashion Star, one of the contestants, I think she might have actually been the winner, Orly Shawnee. She uh -huh. is now doing a bunch of hosting and she's hosting. Fabulous. Some, yeah, yeah. She, she does. So I don't hear too much about her designing, but if her intention was to just get exposure and become more of a, an entertainment host or fashion thing. host, and that definitely Makes worked sense. in her favor. I know that from fashion star uh, Glaudy Joanna, mm -hmm. she was one of the contestants, her line just blew up after that, after yeah. being on fashion star. And she's all over the place now. Mm -hmm. And same thing, we're supposed to get those guys um, in again, but Sh Shobek, I can never pronounce, Shobek Malibu, mm -hmm. after uh, Jesse Rain Garrett, after being on fashion star, they gained so much credibility and just exposure to their lounge. Now they're in Neiman and Saks, whereas before I think they were a little bit smaller. Okay. So I think it just depends on what, what it is you yeah, want to do. And I think sure. the models, if you look at the shows like America's Next Top Model or, uh, well, especially America's Next Top Model, they all end up in different yeah, situations. Yeah, for sure. Some like of them end movies, up hosting, hosting and acting and all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of what you decide you want to make it. Yeah. Well, I think we were having some technical difficulties with okay. Andre. So we will move on if he calls in. Great. But um, we tried, Andre. Um, so what's going on with Hot Hot Mess? Our hot or segment. Hot Mess on the red carpet this week. First up, we have Ms. Zasha Rockmore from the Mindy Project. She was at the 2014 Paley Fest in Hollywood and she wore this <laughs> very interesting outfit. She's trying really hard to be on trend, guys. Trying what? really hard. But what she wore a black and white striped crop top and a multicolored skirt with black booties. I could not find the designer of this outfit anywhere. They probably should never tell anybody. Probably like Topshop. Like, exactly. She just yeah. bought random pieces and yeah. put it together herself. Um, but yeah, it's black and blue and white striped crop top and this multicolored skirt with like blues and uh, greens and like an interesting sort of watercolor almost with pleats and. It's strange. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding what's happening here. No, it's, <laughs> um, and I watched the Mindy Project. I love, love that show. Yes, by the way, it's hilarious. and she is super cute. She's beautiful. She's yes, very tall, tall and, and thin. She and looks like a model, and she's yes. beautiful girl. And the, it, it looks what like she's this? a teenager in this picture. It just yeah. looks like she just threw some clothes on without any rhyme or reason. I know, right? I mean, she could have really, I mean, I would have been okay with the top, with a shirt, and then maybe a long black, like a pencil skirt, a black or skirt, a and some skirt. nice heels i don't uh, get the booties at all I, and, and the hair like the hair with the, the gold hoops it's like okay jenny from the blog like <laughs> no uh -uh. sorry sasha uh, looks like we got a hot mess all the way around the table yeah next up of course also at the paley fest was her boss mindy kaling and she was obviously at the Paley Fest also, and she was wearing Topshop. <laughs> was she? <laughs> yeah, she was. Also trying to be on this whole crop top trend. She's wearing this embellished forest green and black crop top and pencil skirt and black pumps. I actually think she looks really nice. Yeah, she looks okay. cute. Yeah. You guys like this? Yeah, I, I like hate it. it. You hate it. I hate it. You hate it. I hate it. Something is not right about the proportions on this outfit for me. I get that, like, I don't like that it's sort of billowing at her, her waist. waist like to me I mean it looks I mean I don't hate it okay it's all right but I keep seeing her and I knowing what she's done like this television show she's mm -hmm. writing it she's producing it she's starring in it like I want her to shine every time I see her and I still feel like it's just a little bit frumpy and I don't mm. I just don't like it looks like she went to the mall and got it and wore it for the you, event you know I, I don't hate it but I do think because this whole look is very popular now mm -hmm. like the, just the crop top yeah. you know and, and the high waisted, high -waisted skirt. skirt so I feel like it's just she's like oh okay this is a, yeah. a new look now so let me put this look on you know i don't i don't hate it i don't um i've seen her look better but i don't mm -hmm. hate it yeah i don't hate it yeah. either i i don't i don't absolutely love it but i don't yeah. hate it i think mm -hmm. she still looks good i just hate it because i want more yeah and i want it to be better it's yeah. a great color on her and mm -hmm. i just want it to be and also her weight like there's something about the cropping and the waist like something mm -hmm. isn't long enough for not working right for me and it just doesn't but well if you're gonna wear that look like no dairy for a week because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as soon as you sit down that's gonna roll right None. over <laughs> 
no cheese, no milk. <laughs> No ice cream. Yeah. Oh, man. Flat All stomach. right. Speaking of interesting people who are in the news this week, Miss Portia Williams was on a red carpet. She actually sang her new single, Flatline, on 106 in Park this week. And so she was rocking this Christopher Kane, Swarovski crystal embellished dress and red pumps. Girl, she got a new wig with new bangs, a new nose, and new boobies all in the last couple weeks. She's just such an idiot. I just can't get past anything else. She's so dumb. Like, the things that come out of this woman's mouth, uh, just, you know, I, I, I'm a huge Real Housewives of Atlanta of fan. Of course, of course. And just, it kind of taints... It taints your... It taints your, my opinion just, just of look her. look at the picture. I know. But she's oh, so she's dumb. But see, I have no idea who she is. Okay. And then just looking at the picture, I think she looks great. There you go. So I have no idea who this woman is, but I think she's She thought beautiful. the Underground Railroad Stop. was a real railroad with a conductor. <laughs> she's dumb. Sorry. She, uh, <laughs> she looks... I think she looks amazing. I think she looks great, yeah. And she always looks amazing. I don't know why she needed a nose job, but she got a nose job, mm. and... And I she guess it still looks Hollywood. good. She went very Hollywood. She got her new boobs. She didn't need those either, but I think she looks great. I think the dress fits wonderfully. I like the cutout. I like the shoes, too. I like the shoes, and I love the bangs, so I'm good. Okay, I'll stop hating. She does look <laughs> good. Hater. But what I am trying to say is there's something about a woman who's knowledgeable and smart that's also attractive. Yes, well, yes. she <laughs> may not be knowledgeable and smart, but apparently she's got a great left hook because she knocked Kenya Moore out at their reunion, and I it's all over the that. news right now. Now, so along with Flatline, she may also be going to jail soon, but she looks good anyway. Next up, we have Natalie Emanuel, who was in George Chakra Spring 2013 Couture Black Beaded Jumpsuit and Nicholas Kirkwood Black Suede and Pearl Platform Pumps. And she was at the Game of Thrones um, season four premiere. On who, the red carpet. who is that? Is that she's an actress, actress and she's at the Game of Thrones premiere. And I don't understand that outfit at all. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I There's guess if she's, I watched the Game of Thrones and I don't, I don't recognize who that is, but if she's at the Game of Thrones premieres, it kind of, premiere, like, it, it, it kind of makes sense because it's like the period costumey kind of thing, so, I don't know, I think, I think actually I kind of like the style of it, I just don't like the colors, the orange and the black, and I don't like the shoes. I'm just trying to figure out where that, like, the cape, that back part, like where does, where it, does it start? start? You know, is it start from her waist? Is, you know, it's just kind of. I mean, I understand I it's, it's the Game weird. of Thrones, and maybe that's why the cape was something exciting in your brain. But I think it's a bad idea. I think it's the like jumpsuit was. a waist cape. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's strange. I think the jumpsuit would have stood by itself mm -hmm. quite nicely, I and agree. the shoes confuse me. They look like espadrilles, even though they're not, because it's like black pearl mm -hmm. on the bottom. But it, I didn't get that at all. So I don't know who dressed that, but I wouldn't. I, I think it would have been it. way better had that cape not had been orange on the inside. I think black. it's kind of cool, yeah, <laughs> just to have like the, the the skirt with the pants. That it could have been kind of neat and appropriate for the event. I just the color that throws me off. Would you tighten the pants if you still have that cape? Like I feel like it's like slacks. Like why would you have a cape with that? I don't know for the dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> To stand out because we're talking about this person that none of us really That's knows true. who it is. We, it you is. know, she's an actress and now she is on Fashion Four One One. Yeah, see, so there we you don't go. fully approve, but <laughs> whatever. And last but not least, this week, obviously, Miss Kim oh Kardashian God. was everywhere because of the Vogue cover, and this is actually her coming out of the late night with Seth Meyers appearance. She was wearing Rachel Roy 2013 olive green sheer dress and Tom Ford gold lace up sandal. Oh, it's see through. <laughs> I that's the thing with Kim Kardashian like every oh. time I see her she's making that stink face like every single time it's like the woman doesn't smile anymore. Wendy Williams said it's because Kanye West has destroyed her spirit I mean it, she looks like an un, every time I see she a photo unhappy. of her she looks like an unhappy person that is just existing and I I don't like if you're Kim Kardashian you should be you smiling should be from ear to the ear you just made ever. the Vogue cover and she always just has that look on her face so beyond the outfit itself I just can't get past her me face past that her looks face. so different after she had the baby too well, first of all she like, had surgery. I know she had that's surgery. what I'm saying she, she had some a good <laughs> amount of surgery and just she just maybe the surgery causes her not to be able to smile yeah, maybe, maybe it's, like it's, maybe it's no. really difficult maybe she wanted surgery to look like a starving model in the <laughs> face so like her goal was to be like all the time because she like, looked like a model that way I just want to okay I'll, I'll talk about the outfit just because yes. okay 
I actually think the dress is super cool because I liked it when I saw it on the runway. Yeah. My problem with it, with her, and this is not a knock on curvy girls because obviously I am not a skinny chick. I don't understand why every time I see her now, I feel like she's like shoving something into something that she shouldn't be shoving it mm -hmm. into. And this looks like she's wearing her grandma's underwear and <laughs> put on a slip over the top. And it looks stupid. Like, it, it just look looks stupid to me. It you know what's funny about what you just said? <laughs> Steven just said, if you're going to wear something see-through, don't put on granny panties. Exactly. And you just <laughs> but, that's, but that's the thing, though. It's like... Why? She's Kim Kardashian. She just made the cover of Vogue. Why is she wearing something it like this? Looks like this, a swimsuit cover where up. She can be, I agree, exactly. Courtney. I think that on the right person, this dress could have been amazing. But you have to dress for style. She's got amazing curves. She's got huge boobs. She's got the butt. She's got a lot of great things going for her. But she's not a skinny supermodel type of person. And she's not tall. Look and at she's the length tall. of that dress and, and there's booties. Like the straps on those shoes are coming halfway up her leg. And she <laughs> should know that that dress is just not the kind of dress that she should be wearing. And so seeing her in this, it's like, Kim, put a smile on your face. And second, you have no excuse. Why are you wearing this other than the fact that you want to expose more of your body to all of this? I just think she's really trying to be sexy, a style icon. So I think she's just trying to take, okay, well, this I just saw this in somebody's showroom and this is what's next and what's happening. And she wants to be the one that wears it first, regardless of what it looks like on her body. You know what I mean? Or if but it's the right fit for her. this was 2013 and the whole like naked see-through <laughs> dress has been going on for over a year now. So you're behind the curve with the dress number one, even though I actually like the dress and I, I liked it when too. I saw it on the model. Like it's still, it's behind the curve technically. The color does nothing for her. And I get yeah. it. She's into all these like neutrals and like soft palettes because of Kanye and trying to do like mom monotone and all well monotone is boring you look like you look like you're wearing your grandma's bathing suit and it's ugly and that's not you're what ugly. being a style icon mean a style icon is taking your own like your own oh i agree and, yeah. and, i just i think that that's, that's what, what she thinks i know and that's you know? what i'm saying and that's why i don't think she is a style icon because oh, a style no, icon no, is someone no. who isn't looking for the next thing they're the one they're that creating creates it's the, the next thing, thing. They're, and they're creating things that look good on them and it so happens if somebody else wants to copy you great mm -hmm. so it's just and that's what kind of annoys me about her being on the cover of vogue yes because it's Agreed. like that's she's not reason. like you're not an icon no. of anything they made the cover of vogue because it's going to sell <clears throat> copies. I hope it doesn't, though. I, I, want, I, I would to love to see what the numbers I, actually end up being for that, too. because there's been a lot of backlash. Because, like, mm -hmm. the Vogue buyer isn't your necessarily your, like, Cosmo, us like, buyer. Us Weekly buyer. I agree. So, I agree. and Vogue is not a cheap magazine to just mm -hmm. buy for if you're not a subscriber. So, I'll be interested to hear what that actually ends up being. But, if your outfit can be put on peopleofwalmart.com, <laughs> you are not a fashion icon. <laughs> Stephen from the booth. Oh, God. I wish we could see a comparison of a People in Walmart picture because, yeah, I'm sure there's one that's like this on there. I just will say one last thing, though, because I don't want to totally hate on Kim because I don't totally hate on her. I think I love her body. I think it's great. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I just want I mean, you to, you could be your version of Elizabeth Taylor yes. and you're failing. Like, yeah. do something a little, keep it glam, keep it sexy, but sexy in a slightly retro way and you will win every mm -hmm. time because you're gorgeous. She is. She's, she's beautiful. There's no <clears throat> denying she's beautiful. And she's not owning that and not owning she's her own style. She's cheapening it and wrecking it. She's cheapening it. And it's like she's throwing stupid. the sex in, in us so much. It's like, but we already know. We saw the sex tape. We know what you can do. We don't need specific details constantly yeah. reminding us. It's yeah. gross. I know. We know you have a baby now, so. There you go. And we know you lost your and weight. It, and it like, doesn't mean you're not sexy that you don't have a baby, so you don't have to be trying so hard. Exactly. In fact, you <laughs> may be more so because your bountiful boobies are even more bountiful. <laughs> so congratulations. Moving on. All right. Moving on. In closing, Style Watch this week. So. Instead of a person for who we want to follow and pay attention to this week, I found an Instagram for something. Basically, you know, you're looking for outfits and That's trying to cute. figure out how to put some things together. This at Ebony Impression on Instagram is an awesome Instagram to follow just because it's regular women Ooh. submitting their looks 
every day and they're getting posted. So literally like I was looking through and I had this like printed skirt and I was like, what can I do with it? And I'm just looking online and I happened to look at the Instagram and I was like, oh, she put this printed skirt with this really awesome like shirt that I would have never thought of. And I tried it myself and I loved it. So it's just another example of how Instagram is constantly affecting Love. our fashion world. And mm -hmm. whenever you feel like you can't mix it up and figure it out for your own closet, instead of going to buy something else, take a look at what other people are doing and how they're mixing it up and what they're putting together. Maybe you can mix it up yourself and that come out with cool. something really cool. You know what's so funny about this particular dress? I think if I were to see this on a hanger in a store, yes. I'd probably walk right by it. You'd be like, but, what? But seeing it on her, like how she's put the everything shoes. together, the shoes, mm -hmm. the jewelry, it's Fabulous. I love it. So it's cute. fabulous. Snatched, girl. She looks fantastic. She looks it's like a dress so with cute. palm trees all over it. Exactly. I need to go find that. And I love this because, you know, prints are super in right now. And it's yeah. cool to see a different print other than just the flowers. So See, if Kim would have walked out enough an it like that. Thank you, girl. You know, Thank you'd be you. like, oh, my God, wow, she's got some style. Yes. Like, I love the necklaces and the shoes. And, okay, and, and that kind of silhouette looks great on a Do it curvy up. body. Exactly. So. so there you go, guys. Check yeah. out at Ebony Impression on Instagram and keep an eye out very nice okay well that's it you guys it's uh, another friday of fashion and fun from your favorite fashion 411 crew we want to thank you for tuning in again don't forget to download us for free on itunes check us out on youtube and you can follow us on instagram and see all these great pictures that we're referring to uh let's go around the room where can we find everybody i am your host erica garcia rojas and you can find me on twitter and instagram at i am egr and you guys should definitely go to iTunes and rate us. So right now, if you enjoy the show and you listen to us every single week, go to iTunes right now. Go <laughs> and rate us five stars. Put comments because that's what keeps us on the top. And hopefully we can get on the front page of iTunes again. There you so go. with your support, we can do that. Double ditto on that. I am your host, Courtney Stewart. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Stewart Starlet. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram at BHL Fashion 411 and follow us. And I am your host, Deanna Vaughn. You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter with It's Me, Deanna V. And uh, make sure you guys tune in next week because we're going to have some fun, earthy elements because next, well, the month of April is it's Earth Month. Earth month. So, yeah. Mm. So, ha, ha, ha. All right, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Vegan leather. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Hollywood redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.